This is a ratchet free hub mechanism, and it seems to be installed on almost every new wheel set at the moment. But what is it? How does it work? And why has this design become so popular? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain all of that, including telling you how to service them and the one thing about ratchet free hubs that particularly annoys me. Okay, let's start with the basics. The free hub is simply a one-way clutch, which is designed to allow your rear wheel to rotate forwards while allowing the cassette and therefore the crank and chain to remain stationary. And then when you do pedal, it enables the drive to be transferred from you, the rider, through the chain, through the cassette, into the wheel to help drive you forwards. Without a free hub, you have a fixed gear, which is similar to what's fitted onto track bikes and means the wheel and your pedals are directly connected. Now, your traditional free hub used a tooth outer ring on the internal section of the rear hub and then a number of angled pulls which are sat under spring tension. They're able to retract in one direction, allowing the wheel to rotate and the cassette to remain stationary, or they engage into the hub body to lock everything in place and transfer drive to rotate the wheel. Now, this is a design which has been used for a very, very long time, but like all things, there's often ways to improve. So along came the Ratchet Free Hub, designed and invented in the 90s and protected under patent for a very long time. The way in which a ratchet free hub works is, well, you have two metal rings with opposing metal faces. One side is connected to the hub body, the other side is connected to the free hub body, the part where your cassette is connected to. And because the tooth faces are opposing designs, when they go together, they then have light spring pressure attached to them and it allows the mechanism to rotate in one way freely and then in the other way lock into place transferring the drive from the cassette through to the rear hub and then in turn rotating your rear wheel. Okay, that's the simple part I explained because there are actually loads of different ways to design a ratchet free hub and lots of different ways to incorporate them into different wheels. Now, the examples that I've got here today are from Vision, one of our wheel sponsors here at GCN Tech, and the system that they use is called the PRS, Power Ratchet System. Now, there are a couple of unique designs here which make this system different. One of those being a neat helical gear fitted to the free hub body, which when you engage drive through the cassette, helps to pull everything together for a secure engagement. This latest design also has 72 teeth to it, giving a five degree engagement. But what does that actually mean? Well, because we've got these two opposing faces come together, what you do is divide 360 degrees for your circle by the number of teeth fitted to the face. And that gives you your five degree engagement. Now, to give you some sort of context to that, a free hub ratchet mechanism with just two teeth would have 180 degrees of engagement, which would mean the wheel could rotate half of a turn before this thing locked in together, which would actually be pretty rubbish in terms of riding your bike. Now, the main reasons this design has become so popular is because it's a simple design, it's lightweight, it's easy to service, it's reliable, and then, of course, there's the fact that the patent expired a little while ago. Now, in terms of servicing, it's actually pretty simple, and it's going to be specific to the wheel brand that you have, but a lot of the concepts remain fairly constant. Now, in addition to the tools specific to the hardware wheel that you have, you're also going to need simple things like a clean cloth. You're going to need some disc brake cleaner. You're also going to need some grease. Some wheels will have a grease that they specifically recommend to use, but essentially you need to use a similar viscosity grease. If it's too thin, it won't offer much protection, and if it's too thick, well, it'll make the mechanism become sticky and it won't work very well. For this wheel, you simply need to remove the end cap by hand, which then slides off, and then also you can simply pull the free hub body away from the main hub. When you do this, you can also see these helical gears that I was talking about earlier, and this is a design which helps apply pressure to the ratchet mechanism when you turn the pedals to pull everything together and hold it securely in place. Now that we've got the free hub body out of the way, in this instance, we need to use a special tool to remove this outer ring here, which acts as one of the half of the ratchet free hub mechanism. I've already loosened this off so I can actually undo it by hand to help make life simple. And then we get access to our ratchet mechanism here. We've got the spring, which applies a little bit of pressure to it. We've got the other half 
of the ratchet mechanism here, and here's the other half. What we need to do now is take our clean cloth, some disc brake cleaner, and give everything a good scrub. Now this is a service that Vision recommend you should do to your bike once every year, although they do say if you're riding in particularly harsh, dirty and gritty conditions, you should consider doing this in a shorter service interval, much closer to three to six months. When you are cleaning this, at the same time, you can inspect this toothed surface to make sure there's no damaged parts or any corrosion. Same applies for this side here. Once you've got everything clean and you're happy with it, you can take a look at the inside of the hub body, give that a clean and wipe out if you like. You can also check and feel that the bearings are nice and smooth in the hub body. Everything there works perfectly well. You can also do the same for the free hub body. You've got bearing here, you can check that spins freely, take that little cover off. We can also do the same for this bearing here. So that is all good to go. So with everything clean, what we then need to do is take our grease. We can either use the grease which is recommended by the manufacturer or a suitable premium quality grease of a similar viscosity as I explained earlier. Then it's a case simply applying grease to all of the relevant moving parts and surfaces that are contacting each other. That's going to help to reduce the friction and make sure everything works nice and smooth. So like I explained, we've got our fresh grease on all of the cleaned moving surfaces. The spring is back in place, one half of the ratchet mechanism is back in, and the other half I've started to thread in by hand. We can then take the special tool and thread that all the way up. And then, in this instance, Vision recommend that this needs to be torqued to the correct setting, which is 40 Newton meters. To do that, you're of course gonna need a torque wrench with a suitable adapter on the end to fit the special tool. For reference, 40 Newton meters is 29.205 foot-pounds. You can check that, correct me if I'm wrong, in the comments section down below. Now, understandably, it's gonna be very difficult to torque this hub up correctly because it's not built up into a full wheel, but that will be easier to do when the wheel is complete and you can apply some force to it. Once you have got everything torqued up, we'll take our free hub body, gently, slide that and wiggle it over the axle until that butts up here. You might have to rotate it a few times to get it to slot into place, like so. Then we can make sure the seal or washer is in the end, and then it's a case of taking our end cap, which was the first piece we removed, placing that on the end and pushing that firmly into place. So we've got a hub, which looks exactly the same as how it started, got no leftover pieces and a working ratchet mechanism. Okay, final thing you need to do is just to give everything a quick once over to make sure you haven't left any pieces behind and everything works correctly, which it does. And then that means in theory, your wheels should be good to go for another year or so. But what about that one aspect about ratchet free hubs that I find particularly annoying? Well, simply put, I just don't like the noise. I know it's totally subjective, but for me, It just really, really grinds my gears. There you go. Um, hopefully you found that video informative and helpful. It's give you a bit of an explainer into how ratchet free hubs work and also an insight onto how you can service them. But I am keen to hear from you. What are your thoughts on ratchet free hubs? Do you have wheels that use them? And how have you found you get on with them? Get involved in the comments section down below. And as always, if you want to help support our channel and see more interesting maintenance videos like this, subscribe to GCN Tech and turn on your notifications. Right, I'm out of here. See ya.